Welcome to the Happier and Healthier Podcast. I'm your host, Maria Marlowe, and this is a place where we don't rely on good luck or good genes for our health and happiness, but rather we create it with our thoughts and our actions each and every single day. Each week, I'll bring you a thought or a guest that will help you live your happiest and healthiest life. Are you ready? You guys are in for a treat this week as I had a chance to sit down with Kayla Itzinez. Kayla is the most well-known, most influential personal trainer in the world. Back in 2014, Kayla and her partner Toby Pierce created the Bikini Body Guide, which was or is a downloadable PDF that has a 12-week workout program. It's a high-intensity interval training program and it's only 30 minutes, which is amazing because it's pretty easy to fit 30 minutes of working out into your hectic schedule. A few years later, they created the Sweat app, and that is an app that you can take with you wherever you go, and it has the workouts in it, and you can decide whether you wanna work out at home with no equipment or you're at the gym with equipment, so you can really fit working out into your life no matter where you are, what time it is, what's going on, what equipment you have or you don't have. Now this app quickly became one of the top selling apps in the app store. And this is fueled, no doubt, in part or mostly due to the amazing transformations and before and after photos that people who've done her program post on Instagram. So Kayla's following is now 10 million strong. She has millions of people who've went through the program and have loved it and share about it every single day on on Instagram. So her rise to success has been actually quite swift and very well deserved though. So I've actually been working out with Kayla for the past three years, not in person, but through her BBG guide and I literally downloaded it three years ago. This was before the app. I printed it out and I've been bringing the paper printout with me to the gym three days a week for the past three years and I really enjoy it and have found it personally to be very, very effective. Of course, the app would be the more modern way of getting the workouts, but um, I guess I'm just old school and I like the paper printout. So I'm excited to share our conversation with you guys. We talked all about motivation, staying motivated no matter what's going on in your life, and all things fitness, health, and wellness, and of course how she created this empire. So one quick announcement before I get into the convo, this is the last week to sign up for my Tuscany Wellness Retreat, which is happening July 14th through the 21st. Uh, Details for that are all at mariamarlo.com, but in a nutshell, it's a one-week kickstart to help you live your healthiest life and get on a really healthy eating plan for your unique body. There will be cooking classes, nutrition classes, there'll be daily yoga with a separate yoga instructor there, And overall, it'll just be a great time to not only learn, but to also relax and leave super motivated to keep up your healthy habits once you return home. So all the details for that are at mariamarlo.com and the deadline to sign up is June 22nd, 2018. So I hope to see some of you guys there. All right, well, let's just jump into our conversation with fitness phenomenon, Kayla Itzinez. Kayla, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So you have a pretty amazing story. You started as a personal trainer in Adelaide, Australia at a woman's gym and have since become, in just a few short years, the most well-known, most influential personal trainer in the world. How did that happen? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, I ask myself that every day, actually. No, Um, I think like what set me apart, firstly, we started using instagram and we um we started uploading transformations but what really set us apart as a business was uh the success of other women and showcasing that um so a lot of businesses would showcase their success you know what they've done what they've bought you know things that they had whereas we showcase the stories of other women and i think that really took off and the transformations really took off and yeah so we started doing that and then i think the world tour sort of just the it was a free boot camp it sort of brought everyone together and just spread like wildfire through word of mouth so and so was it just a straight trajectory up or were there some bumps along the way? There's definitely bumps along the way. I mean, it's still like going straight up, but there's always like behind the scenes things that sort of like things like we never had built an app before. We never built a website before. We'd never done eBooks before. So all of this was like, we're from Adelaide. Like Adelaide is a small town. Like, 
you know, there are no celebrities there. There's no one that really like makes it. And if they do, they move to America. So, you know, we were trying to like find all these people to help us. And there was no one like that really specialized that all the people were here in New York. Um, so yeah, we just like had to do all these things from scratch. So hire people from scratch. We literally had like a little townhouse where we had like our staff members in a spare bedroom. It was just, yeah. So from scratch, yeah. So so that's good to hear because I think sometimes people look at you now and they're like, oh my God, she has 10 million followers and she has all these fans and people doing her, her workout, top app in the app store. And so it's nice to know that you did come from... Nothing, literally, literally yeah. nothing. Never, like, so, like, to put in context that like, we did not have, like, we did not grow up with, both of us did not grow up with money. Our families did not have, like, you know, they, they had, like, they were, my parents were teachers. They got a teacher's salary. They didn't have loads and loads of money um my dad didn't even have a job when my when my parents bought like their first house with us when we were little so it's like stories like that um then growing up we were just normal kids with normal jobs a personal trainer salary is not that great um starting out my own studio was better but um still not amazing um so releasing the books were just like it was just a game changer for us and really like we did learn everything from scratch and we hired people on personality not on whatever skills that they had so that's incredible. Yeah, it was and fun. you're you're at what a hundred employees now? By the end of the year, hopefully at a hundred. So now like seventy five, but we've still got so many like departments now, like managers now. So it's yeah, that's amazing. So are there any mottos or principles you go by that you think helped shape your success? Always like things like staying humble. Always remembering like where you come from. You know, like remember where your background is. Remember the people that were there for you for you from the start that are still there for you now. Um, so sort of things like that, just remembering like, I don't know, like really where you came from. And for me, that's really important because I'm from Adelaide and I've still got my Greek family there. Like it's really easy for me to pack up and move to America and then really, really make it like, I would call it big time here. Like, you know, you, you've got access to all the media whenever you want. Like for us to access media, we have to fly 30 hours. Like we can't just like hop on a plane to LA or hop on a plane to New York. It's like a long trip. So to make that, I guess there's small sacrifices, but it's worth it to have family. I'm pretty sure you've already made it big time. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure the media, like you can still get media even over in Adelaide. Yeah, and, yeah. not much. <laughs> but it's it's really amazing. Like one thing that I, I really admire about you is that you sort of came into this personal training world when being a personal trainer wasn't necessarily a cool thing. Like now it's a cool thing. Personal trainers are the new celebs. And back when you started, they weren't. And a lot of times I'll get people asking me like, oh, you know, I'm so interested in nutrition and I love healthy eating, but I'm scared. Like I can't change my career. I don't want to go into that career because there's too many people doing it. Or how am I going to differentiate myself? Yeah. But it, it doesn't matter, right? If you have the passion, oh if you God. have the drive. No, yeah, it does not matter at all. There were so many personal trainers. I mean, there's gyms everywhere in Australia. Australia was like leading for like health and fitness for so long. We have healthy stuff everywhere. We have gyms everywhere. People signing up left, right and center. There were so many personal trainers, but that's what I wanted to do. Like I literally, I know it sounds like corny or whatever, but like I wanted to do something to do with sport. Like I wanted to be a sports coach. Like that was in my head. Never personal training when I was in school. Never. I never thought I want to be a personal trainer. I was like, I'm going to be a PE teacher. So I'm going to teach kids sport. That's all I know. Like don't ask me that. My mom's like, you know, you have to do math. You know, you have to study science. You know, you have to do a teaching degree, the whole degree. I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. (laughs) So then I did personal training as like a side, like job sort of thing to get me like a better like record when I like handed in like my resume somewhere. But I loved it so much. Like, I literally loved it. And I, as soon as I did it, I was like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Like, So having that passion is really yeah, the so number important. one thing. Yeah. Right. You can't do things ever. And I can always say this to people. If you think that your job, you're only doing it because it's going to make you money, don't do it. Don't do it at all because it will be the worst thing you've ever done. You'll be unmotivated. You won't love it. There is Money comes, it goes up and down, up and down. So you really want something that you are so passionate about, you put your whole soul into it. And if, even if money stuffs up, you're like, I'm still doing what I love. Right. And even if the money doesn't come right away, you right. have to have that passion in order to keep going. And on the days when it's not a good day or it's a 14 hour, 16, 18 hour day, like yeah. you need all of that to keep going. And that's why me and Toby work really well because Toby's very um, business focused. He's got a, such a brilliant mind, but I'm so passionate. He's like, you'll put in the work because you love it. And I was like, yeah, I don't feel like I'm working at all. Like training, you're starting at 5 a.m. in the morning is not an issue for me. I'm like, okay, I'm training my clients. It's fine. Yeah. Music's on, it's good. Right. So speaking of motivation, 
when it comes to fitness and health, what advice would you have for someone who's feeling a little bit unmotivated, can't get themselves to the gym? How do you bring that spark of motivation back? I think like pulling it all backwards. So instead of being like, listen to music, go for a walk, like things like that. It's like more like, listen to your body. Like, why do you feel unmotivated? Firstly, like, what do you feel? Do you feel tired? Maybe you haven't had enough water. Like, have you been eating crappy foods? Like, maybe that's why your stomach doesn't feel quite right and you don't feel like going to the gym. Like, when you don't eat right and you don't drink enough water, it makes the biggest difference in the world. So firstly, like, listen to your body. Maybe you need some more rest. Maybe you need to skip, like, that weekend going out. Once you've got those things in order... Then slowly start going to the gym. Slowly go and do the bare minimum. Walk. That's it. And then slowly build up from there. Don't just like, oh, like, I'm going to smash out a two-hour work. No, don't do that. Right. You don't actually need a two-hour workout, No, you right? never need a two-hour no. workout. No one needs a two-hour workout. <laughs> right. You, 30 minutes, right? That's it. Perfect. That, that's yeah. all you need. Because I, I feel like some people are are scared that maybe that's not enough. But what, what would you say to them? No, I think that mentality came from athletes. So the, the first people that were on social media or that were famous on like even in magazines were athletes so um athletes or people whose jobs it was to train for hours and hours so they would say you know i train for two hours and i train for three hours not expecting normal everyday people to do that normal and everyday people cannot maintain or sustain two hour workouts every single day unless you do not have a job or kids or anything like that right. so that came from athletes and it sort of like came down same with bodybuilders bodybuilders their job they're amazing but their job if you are a professional bodybuilder is to work out for those hours that's your job like your job is to do this you're not needing to work out for two hours half an hour is enough right and, and you see results you know you 100 percent see results it's just that you have to be consistent with it yes. right yeah so do you think that what would you say would be a good place for someone to start do you think even three days a week i mean obviously one day a week would be my so my program's three days a week um four days a week working out max that's enough so starting off one day a week, perfect. Two days a week is really is is good. Three days a week is ideal. Four times a week is I'd say a lot. If you can maintain it, it's good. Five times too much. Six that you'll burn out. Six times a week. I I think if you're doing that 365 days a year. Yeah. So I think three times a week is maintainable for the everyday person. Well, that's really good news, right? Because I think people are breathing a sigh of relief now because there's also this all or nothing mentality sometimes. It's yeah. like, oh, well, if I can't go to the gym five days a week or four days a week or whatever, then I'm just not going to go at all. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. So not saying for the people who do work out six times a week, that's absolutely fantastic. But for the everyday, you know, people, a mom with kids, you know, that's running around three times a week is like really good for them. It's like an achievement for them. Yeah. And totally doable. Yeah, totally doable. So we both work with women a lot, and I think something that is pervasive throughout society, whether you're in America or Australia or wherever, is there's a lot of negative self-talk sometimes amongst women and feeling bad about our bodies, whether it's because of what we see in the news and the media, like um, these body images that are maybe not realistic or whatever the case may be. So how do you deal with that or how can we start stopping that negative self-talk and being more positive about being more confident with our body um so i literally just answered this like i was just talking to a girl before about just like taking the first step in accepting compliments so we as women i'll say to you i like your top and then you'll say back to me automatically oh yeah but it was, it was like ten dollars from like forever new or whatever whatever the place is called and it's like, well, I didn't ask you like where it's from. I didn't ask you how much it costs. I just said, you look really nice. So your response to me should be, thank you so much. So things like accepting compliments, firstly. Secondly, like not comparing yourself. There is like, and I know that sounds so corny. Don't compare yourself to people on social media where I'm sitting there like shredded or whatever. And people are like, well, Kayla, you look like that. But it's like at the end of the day, if my life is horrible, if I feel terrible about myself, which I don't, but if I feel terrible about myself and my relationships aren't good and my family's not good, you don't get to see that. So don't compare yourself to maybe my life, which is not so great. I mean, I might look great, but my life might be terrible. Again, it's not terrible. Just saying, there is a lot of girls on social media that portray this certain image, but their lives on the in the back end is not what it, what you see it is. So yeah, stop comparing and accept compliments. Well, I think one thing that I also love about you and that I think has helped you grow is that you are so authentic yeah. and you do show more to your life than just your shredded abs. You show your family, you show your relationships, your food, all of these other things. And because you've built your business on social media, 
besides not comparing yourself to others, how do you stay sane and not let the social media consume you? Um, I think it has like consu- like it has consumed me in like but in like a good way. I have like somehow built like the biggest community of like motivational women ever. So I don't have a community where like I'll get abused like constantly thrown at me like constant abuse like I don't get um you know negative comments like on the daily so my the, the community that you build in the people that the, the things that you post and the way that you talk builds sort of this community around you so you know and like okay for, for example little things like if you're asking me how I would like step away for a little bit like I'll go for a walk I'll go see my grandparents who have no internet who have no phone um they have nothing they have no mobile they would have no idea how to use it so I'll do things like that, but otherwise I kind of like my community. Like I like my business. It's really, really good. They are very positive, and That's I know so nice. Yeah. Like everyone supports each other. Everyone's sort of like instant friends in a way because you have this thing that's kind of bigger than everyone that unites everyone. And I feel like everyone is wanting to help each other and wanting to see each other succeed, which right. is so nice to see because sometimes amongst women it's a little bit more competitive. Yeah, definitely. You've definitely built a beautiful community. Thanks. Yeah. So exercise is obviously a big part of your life. And of course, being fit is important and a great benefit. But are there any other reasons that you work out or benefits that you see from working out? No, I just literally love it. Like I've loved it since I was a kid. I always tell people like I don't have a story, like a magical story about like, you know, how I got into health and fitness and like it's changed my life. Like it hasn't like I've grown up. I literally was born loving fitness. Like I, as soon as I could get a basketball in my hand, I would play. As soon as I could coach my little cousins like on how to play, I would do that. So it's like, it's benefited my life so much, but it hasn't like ch- changed my life. I never got into it for any other reason than I just love it. Like I love my job. Right. And then like people just say like, I love my job so much. Like I really love my job, seriously. Yeah, well it shows for sure. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I think um, one thing that also helps sometimes when I don't want to go to the gym or, or work out is like also just thinking like how good you feel after doing it, right? Yeah. It just, I feel like it boosts your mood, your whole day is a little bit better, you stand up a little taller, like everything's a little bit happier and better, I feel like after a workout. You feel empowered, like you feel confident. The reason we created like BBG is because there was nothing out there for women to do that they felt really empowered by it was all like these workouts that I that I that I used to see for women were just so I, I don't want to say like the word no, I won't say the word I was gonna say I was gonna say like girly like this really like there was no there was no anything to them there was no like empowerment there was no inspiration there was no like big jumps there was no weights there was nothing there so we created this program so women like finished and they were completely exhausted but they were like in a good way and they're like oh, i did that by myself and so women needed that they needed like not don't hire a personal trainer to stand over you and you tell you what to do you have this like thing that you have to do by yourself and it was so empowering for women so i've been doing your workout for the past three years wow and, and i love it and i do it downstairs i have a gym in my building and a lot of times i can't tell you how many times i'll be there i'll be jumping up on the bench i'll be doing burpees i'm doing all this like hardcore stuff and then i'm getting in the elevator and the guys are like wow like how are you doing that i could never do that's that that's what i love that's what i mean by the workouts before being girly like that word girly now the word girly is like you have no idea like the guys come to my boot camp and they're like i thought that this was going to be easy and it is so hard and I stopped so many times and all the women around me are smashing me and I'm like yeah so workouts aren't girly I'm, I'm doing like a air, air quotes air quotes girly anymore they're like so empowering and so strong yeah so I actually it's funny so I've made my boyfriend do it and he's like oh whatever bikini body boot camp ha, yeah ha, ha. he does like triathlons <laughs> So I'm like, all right, buddy, this is just, let's see what happens. And he was like, oh, he was dying. So yeah. we actually, we did like a funny video for it on Instagram, like about like healthy girl problems. And um, he, it's it's true. And I was like, this is not actually a joke. Like I'm actually crushing it and he's dying. <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> yeah. So do you, you know, you're traveling all the time, you're working, you still see clients, right? Mm-hmm. Do you have any downtime or how do you um, relax and, and do you actually like go home for dinner and eat dinner are you sleeping oh yeah so i always make sure i have eight hours of sleep always 
So when I get eight hours, like Toby says, like I'm like Toby, like when it gets to like eleven thirty, and I'm like Toby's like, yeah, yeah, you need your eight hours. I get it. Like it's like a personal joke with us. In terms of like food, me and Toby always like, always at the table for us to sit down together. So that's like our time. Um, breakfast, I always like have by myself, and I watch like I walk on the treadmill, and then I watch like Netflix for like. So the episode goes for like an hour. I walk for thirty minutes and watch the other thirty minutes like eating breakfast. These are all like me times, and then it's like smash out the day, and then relax at night. So yeah. That's so important and that's so nice to hear because I think also in 2018 it's almost become a badge of honor to be really busy or to not oh have Oh my time. god, this is exactly what I was saying. Like people think it's cool that they haven't slept and I like announcing it to people like, oh my god, I only got two hours of sleep last night. I'm like, that does not make you better than anyone. That actually makes you irresponsible for not sleeping enough and then coming to work and not being able to do your job properly and that's like me if i only got two hours of sleep there's no way i'd be able to be on for my a game for boot camp my meet and greets i wouldn't be you'd almost be falling asleep trying to hug people or they'd be talking to you and you tune out because you're so tired so you have to sleep like you have to eat well it's like a sign of self-respect for sure and it catches up to you i feel like you know when you're a bit younger and you're like early 20s and stuff like oh haha it's fine like you can pull all night <laughs> and, and then every year as you get older you realize yeah like you need that rest yeah for sure so can you take us through a day in the life of kayla what are you doing what are you eating okay so like after my eight hours of sleep <laughs> i'll get up um i'll have i'll go for a walk on the treadmill but if i'm hungry first um, which is probably most of the time i'll have two pieces of toast i actually uploaded it on my instagram the other day two pieces of toast tomato from the garden anchovies which is either gross to you or awesome to you and some olives that my family home makes like these olives i'll have that on toast two pieces of toast walk on the treadmill um at nine o'clock every day i go see my grandparents for a coffee um so we have turkish coffee we call it greek coffee because the greeks make it so we, it's, it's actually turkish coffee guys um but they call it greek coffee and then I just, I'm off on the day doing like content creation. I'm either traveling or like I'm at the studio. So the, you know, my Instagram photos, you see the front room is where I take those Instagram like pics or whatever. The middle room is a workout, like a gym that I work out in. And the back room is called content creation where there's a green screen where we film for the app and things like that. So we're in there most of the days and in the office and then home to cook for me and Toby. Sounds like a very good day. Greek wife i am <laughs> no, that's so nice you know and i think that relationships are such an important pillar to our health and our happiness too like it's not just food and exercise i think relationships yeah of course 100 yeah. percent. that's why you guys live so long yeah right? <laughs> so speaking about health are there any misconceptions about weight loss that you just wish would go away as in like trying to lose weight yeah yeah so many like cutting out carbs like a lot of American, I hear in America a lot, like, oh, I'm on a diet, like, I'm just going to cut out carbs, like that, oh, it drives me insane, because um, people don't know what carbohydrates is, I said to them, oh, what's carbs, and they say bread, I'm like, well, that's not what carbs are, but okay, if that's what you think, um, so that first thing is, that one, working out for hours and hours, um, what else is there, like, extreme dieting, like, these extreme diets, and like misconceptions, even about me, that like people are like, oh, you must work out for like six hours a day. You must be on a really strict diet. Not at all. Like we had pasta last night. We had we actually have had pasta like <laughs> every single day that we've been here. But you have the healthy option. Yeah. Yeah, I agree 100%. And I think also, what would you say about um, people who think that like they only have to exercise and then not worry about diet? You would have to, you would honestly have to exercise so, so, so much. And why not? Why wouldn't you want to have a healthy diet? Like, and that, that's another thing, like the word diet, like they'll say, oh, well, I'm just going to exercise, but eat whatever I want. Like oh, you can still eat whatever you want. Just try and have the healthy option. Like, for example, me in the morning, like toast, that's bread. Me at lunchtime, like sushi or like a rice dish, that's rice. And dinner time, pasta, like that's pasta, that's bread, rice and pasta all in one day, but the healthy option of it. So I always say it's not, it's not what you're actually, it's not the bread that's unhealthy, it's what you put on it that makes it unhealthy. If you put olive oil on bread, great. You put Nutella on bread, wrong. 
Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. yeah. And it's all about upgrading too. Like that's what I try to always t- teach people is that you can still eat things that you like and that you love. Try and upgrade it. Is there a healthier version of it? Yeah. And then also what you do the majority of the time is going to have a bigger effect than what you do once in a while. So if you're mostly eating uh, your you know, vegetables and healthy foods and having fresh fruit and all of these things. If you have some pasta, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, even if, even if you have Nutella on toast, like I will eat healthy all week and including pasta and including rice, that is in my healthy, like that's my mindset. And if I have Nutella on toast, I could care less. I don't feel guilty at all about having that because I eat the healthy, I eat all healthy foods during the week. If I feel like Nutella on toast, I'm like, cool, have it. That's one of the biggest things is that, yes, you can't feel guilty. It's the worst thing in the world to be eating something and then feeling guilty and bad about it. I think it really just makes it worse. And I swear, this is not scientifically proven, but I feel like you gain much more weight when you feel guilty about something (laughs) than if you just eat it and just go on with it. Because we just beat ourselves up for it. And then I think it puts us in this negative spiral where we're like, we let it snowball and we're like, oh, well, I ate something bad. So now I could eat bad. That's what you mean by gaining weight. Because what happens is you eat something bad. If you feel guilty, you become unmotivated. You become unmotivated, you don't move. Move. it's a bad cycle and then you don't move you don't go to the gym you cancel your gym membership and six months later you've done nothing whereas if you don't feel guilty you're like oh cool i'm just gonna go for a walk now and you go to the gym the next day and your life moves on so um one thing i wanted to ask you about as a fellow non-drinker i think we what was something we have in common is that water is our favorite drink yeah uh so a lot of times people will ask me especially here in new york they feel pressured to drink socially because Anytime there's a meeting or a date or whatever, it's typically at a bar or over drinks. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious what you would advise people, like if they want to cut back on alcohol or really don't want to drink, how do they do it without feeling socially awkward? Um, So the so the first thing I ever did was um, if you first if you have a strong personality, you can just say, look, I don't drink alcohol. Like and people will like, oh okay, like it's actually like if you just say like if you're saying if you say I'm not having a drink, then you'll feel the pressure because I'll be like, just one drink, one drink. But if you say to them, I don't drink alcohol and you're very stern with them, then they're understanding. If you still feel the pressure, I used to actually order non-alcoholic drinks and just have them in my hand and not say anything. And when someone used to say to me, oh, what are you drinking? I'd say, oh, it's a, whatever it was, some vodka soda or something. Whatever it was, something like that. Yeah. And then um, like a mojito, whatever it is, say uh-huh. that. I'll just yeah. say it's a mojito and they say, oh, okay. Like it's almost like a lie, but like if you feel like you have to do that, then you do that. But I was always like a virgin mojito. I was always just, and they would say, "Oh, can I try it?" And I say, "Sure." And they'd be like, "That tastes awesome," and then just would walk off. Yeah, like it's just. It's you so, don't have to, you do not have to drink. It's And it's so interesting how people, when you're around them, they want everyone to drink, but it's so ridiculous. It's about it, confidence. It's like lower yourself, like, no, or not lower yourself, but like be at my level, like get at my level. Right. Like I think everything's funny right now and I'm like a little bit like off balance and I want you to be off balance so we can have fun together because people like people on their level. Right. Otherwise, it's intimidating if you're completely sober. Right. Because you can see everything around you, but people don't want to see you looking at them and judging them and feeling like... So they say, have a drink. So, yeah. That's absolutely it. Just kind of be like confident in, in your stance that you don't want to drink. And I think a big part of it is, yeah, people don't want to be judged. And so that's why they're like, what are you drinking? What are you yeah. drinking? Have a drink. Yeah. Yeah. So don't worry about it. So one question I like to ask all of my guests is if there's just one piece of advice you could leave people to live a happier and healthier life, what would it be? My one piece of advice would be to add things to your life instead of subtracting things from your life. So instead of cutting things out of your life, add in things that are either healthier or make you feel better or make you feel good rather than trying to eliminate things straight away because then you're left with nothing and then you're unmotivated. You, for example, you like, I'm going to take out rice. I'm going to take out pasta. I'm going to take out bread. I'm going to take out, I'm take, 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 take. And then you don't see your family. Then you can't go out to family dinners. You can't go out with your boyfriend. You can't do anything. And you're left with nothing. And you feel miserable. And then you hate dieting and then you hate exercise. So add things to your life. I love that. And that's definitely a philosophy I go by too. I think it's about adding in the good stuff versus subtracting. Yeah. And I think that also changes the perspective because I think a downfall or what gets people unmotivated is that they feel like they're depriving themselves or they're punishing themselves. Like I'm going to go to the gym, but it's more of a punishment yeah, right. versus nourishing their body. Yeah, right. And it's making that distinction that makes the difference between are you going to actually work out and eat healthy on the regular or are you going to just throw in the towel? Yes, 100%. 
Well, thank you so much Thanks. for being here, Kayla. Thank you so much. And I just want to thank you for all that you do. You thank know, you. you've really built an incredible community. You've built an incredible workout that fits very easily into my life and <laughs> millions of women's lives. Thank you so and much. And so, yes, thank you so much. And thank you to everyone listening as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode as much as I did. Kayla is truly an inspiration and she's just a great example that you can do anything if you put your mind to it and you're passionate and you're persistent. If you enjoyed and got value out of this episode, if you could just take one minute to leave a review on iTunes, I would be so, so grateful. Your authentic reviews help us get more amazing guests on the show, and they also help the podcast reach a wider audience. So I'd so appreciate that. And as a little thank you, if you do write a review, I'll send over a free three-day sugar detox meal plan that is super effective. So if you're struggling with sugar, this will really, really be helpful. And in order to get it, just simply email a screenshot of your review to info at mariamarlo.com. If you want to connect and talk more about this episode, you can find me over on Instagram at Maria Marlowe. That's M-A-R-L-O-W-E. You can also find the Happier and Healthier podcast Facebook group. Lastly, if you want more health, nutrition, and recipe content, you can head over to mariamarlo.com. Thanks so much for tuning in this week. And remember, health and happiness are a choice.